today we're going to make Sarah and Sarah is this fabulous over the arm storage handy caddy to have. It's uh, got loads of pockets, it's got a little box there that you can take on or off, you've got a thread catcher at the, th at the front um, and it's actually quite an easy project really, there's lots of bits to it obviously because we've got all the the different they've got the boxes and we've got the pockets as well that we need to add um, and it's just so super pretty i love sarah i think she's going to be a great addition and of course she matches sarah there which is just behind me so um, make the both to match um, and then you've got everything you need right next to you if you're just sitting on the sofa or your favorite armchair um, the one thing I want to just point out is that this one, the one I've made and probably the one I'll make now because uh, can, we can chop and change it, is for the right hand side. So if you sit on a sofa, this will go over the right hand side of your sofa. If you're sitting in a chair, obviously it doesn't matter. But um, it's just so you're aware because then otherwise the pockets will be the, the other way around and you want your thread hanger or thread storage solution will be hanging over the side and if you do it the other way it'll be hanging off the back so that's the only thing I'll say to you is that you need to get the right way around we'll talk about it as we go along you can decide what to do anyway that is Sarah so let me show you Sarah in real life let me just pop the pattern down because obviously I will try to follow the pattern you know that's not always possible but we give it a good shot Okay, so this is how she looks. So if I do it that way, let's do it so I'm holding it that way. Difficult when you haven't got a sofa handy. Um, <laughs> you can see that the thread catcher hangs down there. Those are your two pockets that obviously will sit beside you. And this is the, this is removable. So we're using hook and loop. So you can decide whether you have it there or not. But basically I was thinking, well, if you're sitting there, you can pop your scissors in there or at the back to make them safe. But what about reels of thread? I mean, I suppose you can put them in the pockets, but it could be that they'll end up quite bulky and you don't want them digging into your legs. So I figured if we have a little storage caddy sitting at the top, that would be ideal. And we want to be able to take it on or off so I can remove it like that. And we always have to make sure we put the fluffy side and um, it'd be the loop side of the hook and loop on the top here. If you put the other side on there, it may catch on your clothing, but this won't. So it's the loops you put on the actual Sarah, not the hooks. And if I turn that around, there we go. So that hangs over the back of the sofa and that's your two large pockets there. So take knitting needles, patterns, things like that. And of course I would say, Put it over the arm of your sofa or chair before you stitch the uh, thread caddy on there or the, the Velcro that actually takes your box. Um, because you'll see with mine, because I did this for my sofa, that sits just nicely at the bottom of the seat um, and this hangs longer over the back, you can see that. But you may want it equal distance you may need to make this a little shorter but a lot of this is going to be down to where you sit and what you sit in anyway so there we are and i've put my loop on here further forward because i figured if you were sitting in a smaller chair you'd want room for your elbow so if i was to pop that on there let's get it on there straight it means you've got this little bit here you can see to actually you've got room for your arms um, put it back a little bit more if you wish but that's how I work through it in my head so that is Sarah and she's she's lovely isn't she really pretty I've used decorative bias on here but you could use regular bias and we'll do that today um, but but find some decorative bias because it really does and make it super pretty I don't know if you can pick it up in the in the film there so let's pop um, Sarah to one side let's just pop the thread catcher in there <laughs> we'll pop her I never leave myself enough room let's put it over there <laughs> there we go we'll bring her back in later so like I say I'm going to try and follow the pattern as best I can so you have to do a little bit of prep work before you start uh, working on this the first thing we're going to make is the upper box 
and so you'll need lining you'll need um, an outer or an inner fabric um, this is going to be my outer fabric so I put the Decaville light on the inside if you're in the US then you may want to use um, like a pellon there's a there's a medium weight um, iron-on pellon that you might want to use um, you'll find something that suits you I haven't used wadding deliberately I wanted a little bit of structure with this um, so that's that's what I decided to, to use is the Decaville light so you'll have the lining which is um, this gorgeous fabric and you've got the outer so you need to decide which is which before you start um, so the first thing we're going to do is actually put the uh, loop I have to try and remember which one I want to tell you the hook piece of velcro hook and loop on the inside of uh, sorry on the outside of your lining piece on the outside of your outer piece so let me just find that so just try to remember what we're doing here it's the loops that go on to the actual main body so i'll pop that to one side but it's the hooks that you want to put on the bottom of your outer box so you just need to find the middle so you can do this obviously you can mark this before you put the decaville on so if we look on the overhead you'll be able to see my pieces so all i'm going to do is fold that in half Give it a little squidge make a mark if you want and if you find that easier um, and then fold again and then you find the exact middle because you want the hook and loop to be right in the center of your piece there now you're going to have difficulty seeing that but that's where my cross is so my my um loop part my hook part <laughs> I knew I'd have difficulty with this is going to go right over the center and we're just going to stitch that in place and we do that before we build the build the box it's so much easier and this of course goes on the outer piece so the piece that you decide is going to be the outer with the decaville then that's where you put it so if we bring the machine in um, just do a regular stitch this hasn't got an adhesive backing so you don't need to worry about picking up any glue but do a nice um, firm stitch you know you want a, a 2.5 is fine but make sure you back stitch because you're going to take this on and off perhaps I didn't want anything permanent I wanted to give you the option of being able to take it on and off So back to where we started, do a lovely back stitch, make it really nice and strong. Cut your threads if you need to. So there's our um, hook part <laughs> attached to the outer part of our box. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually stitch the sides of this together. So what you need to do is to bring those sides in. There's a really good picture in the pattern to show you that and you're going to stitch down both these sides and then you're going to box the corners out and you're going to repeat that with the lining so let's just do that and to actually sort of prepare these um, pieces you could stitch uh, sorry you could um, iron over a quarter of an inch on the top edges So there's one this this box isn't tall enough really to do a turning gap you can if you want to but with the decaville it's it will make it just a little bit tricky so there's our sides stitched okay and now we're going to box those bottoms out so all we do is pinch you can see there just pinch that together and you're stitching along there on both sides so i do it that way you'll see you can open up that seam if you want to but you're just stitching right across very very easy this is actually quite a nice easy project even though i've given it a two star because there's bias binding and you may not have done bias binding before so there's one corner done obviously this goes on the outside and then do the next one Okay. 
and there is a picture in the pattern that shows you that right so when we've got to that stage and we'll do the same with the lining in just a moment we want to box this off so if you have a look at it now it's a bit, little bit like when we made Sara that we needed to, to box it to make it so it looks like a box because obviously we've just used long pieces here that don't have any structure as such so what we need to do is to pinch these sides in so if you look there we go if you look at that just there where this corner is I want you to pinch those pieces together to make it's the, what would you call it the side seams you're going to make faux side seams now you can measure this if you want to but quite honestly the the width of this is really small you can do this by eye so look let me show you can see what that looks like so we're going to do that on all four corners and we're going to stitch a sixteenth of an inch um, along there so really you need to be quite accurate with this and the main thing is to get your top edges parallel to each other so your raw edges are sitting right on top of each other if you're worried about um, you know your fabric coming away from your decaville or your, your whatever interfacing you'll use then I would I would perhaps run a little stitch down if I show you here run a little stitch down here between the layers before you start this part and then you know your fabric and your decaville are going to stay together so again pinch make sure your top edges are parallel because then you'll know you've got it in the right place 16th of an inch you don't want it to be any bigger because it, it really we're already taking some of our seam allowance away from when we put our lining in so bear that in mind so we'll have to ease our lining in the lining is made with the same size pieces of fabric so imagine we're taking what are we taking four sixteenths <laughs> away But the great thing about working with fabric is you have got that sort of you've got a, a little bit of manipulation anyway so we're not on the bias but you can still manipulate it enough so we've done all four corners so can you see how that looks now it's completely different isn't it to how it looked before and just turn that through there we go really lovely super job just poke out your corners and we've got a lovely box in the making so let's do that with the lining so we're going to do <laughs> let's get that the right way around we're getting the two long sides together like that right sides together and we're just going to stitch down the sides so it's right sides together quarter of an inch seam allowance And this is going to be the lining and this matches the um, underside the lining if you like of the of the throw over so there's our side stitched so now we're going to box the bottom so you just bring in the outer corners just pinch them together there we go and it's quarter of an inch again and I didn't do a back stitch and I want to do a back stitch so and again the other side So that is our lining completed. We don't have to do the little columns like we did before with the outer piece because that'll hold it all in place. So now what you're going to do is you're going to put wrong sides together with your <laughs> wrong sides together with your outer. <laughs> We're so used to turning things right side out, aren't we? Um, and I want you to best as best as you can to get those corners to meet up so you know that your 
seams are all in the right place so you should have a seam in the middle of the sides on the lining and the outer but just make sure those corners are sitting nicely make sure it's all sitting together and then what we're going to do we're going to go around the whole thing turning under a quarter of an inch on both as we go along now this is what I said right at the beginning if you wanted to and it will make it easier for you is to before you stitch anything together is to turn over those top edges by a quarter of an inch on all of the pieces so it would be four and like I said if you did if you've already made um, Sarah there <laughs> We did that and, and it does make a huge difference. So we're going to start just at one end or one side, wherever you find it's comfortable and we're going to fold over a quarter of an inch. Now you could of course pin this and clip this or you can do it as you go and I shall just do it as I go. And also on this particular box, on the original one, I, um, I went all the way around and I attached zigzag um, rickrack as I went round. But you can do this part first and then you could do it again. Now because I want the outer to look really neat, I'm going to stitch it onto the outer. You, you might have a free arm. And like I say, every single time, if you've got a free arm, please use it because it makes a huge difference to um, doing this part. So I'm just folding my two edges over a quarter of an inch as I'm going around. So be aware that your Decaville, your, your interfacing, is cut a quarter of an inch smaller to allow for you to fold that back. It would be quite tricky if you didn't have that quarter inch. And, and actually make it a little bit more makes a huge difference. So I think I might add some rickrack, but also just keep aware of these, um, that's those seams on the end. You want those seams to match up. So just work your way around. Just want to make sure my seams are going the same way. This is when, if you've, you're pressing as you go, in the ideal world, I just want to check and make sure which way my seam is going. I want to make sure those seams are sitting on top of each other and that way I know it's all going to fit. And surprisingly, it does, even though we've taken the teeny weeny off in those, uh, those corners on the outer. So again, just keep folding and stitching. When we make the the thread catcher we, we can turn through because first of all we're using wadding which is much more yielding um, but also it's uh, the, the sides are slightly bigger which gives you an opportunity to give put a, a bigger turning gap in whereas with this box it's not it doesn't stand quite so um, so high but it doesn't seem so anyway I mean, perhaps it's an optical illusion but because we're using Decaville, it doesn't turn out so easy. So we're almost round. And like I said, if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you press that, uh, those, those top edges, like I said before, you'll, you'll find this process now what I'm doing a lot, lot quicker. But then you've had to press it, so. So the last two, three inches. Coming back to where we started, and that's done. Obviously, all of these processes you need to press. So there's our box made. Looks nice, doesn't it? And then we can add the rick rack. So that will go on there. You put it a little bit further down if you want. Now I don't worry about turning my rick rack over. In fact, what I'm going to do is turn this inside out because it's a lot easier if you do that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about folding the end of the rick rack out, you know, to make it super neat. Um, you've always got to remember what you're making. We're not making a couture dress. 
making a storage box so I'm you know this is the outside but I'm going to find it easier on my machine so I'm just going to step that down a bit you might you might ask yourself if this is such a an awkward machine why do I use it oh, super. <laughs> and I'm hoping to get all this the same all the way around we'll have a look at the end see if I have obviously you can pin all this um, use, a, use a few dots of fabric glue to hold it all in place still got it on the reel it's just I keep it keep it on there it's quite handy so just take it all the way around and it just this just pretties it up you could use some lace that would look nice we're also um, stitching the lining down again and all of these things help for it to sit better so I've just come back to the beginning so I give that a little snip just take my raw my loose threads rather off oh that sits perfectly on top of each other <laughs> a couple of little back stitches it's not anything structural so we don't need to worry about it <clears throat> and there is our first box made there we go again as like I said it needs a really good press and everything will look gorgeous but there's our first box nice isn't it with the the rit rat going around okay so let's move on to the thread catcher next so I'll just move on okay so on this we've got the outer and I've got warding and I want you to see, I hope you can see, that I've actually joined some scrap pieces together. Can you see? With um, the special tape that you can use. And so don't ever throw your scraps away because this was ideal. And this is my lining. So it matches my box, which is lovely. Now we, know, we need to put some ribbon on or um, I'm going to use Rick Rack or you could use the bias <coughs> to actually make the two, um, let me show you, the two uh, loops that hold it onto your piece. So let me turn this around. So there we are. So those two pieces, you can see that beautifully. And what I'll do is when I make mine, I'll use the measurements on the original one that I've made to make sure that I place this exactly in the right place. Now in the pattern, you will get the exact um, places where to put your ribbon or your rip rack or whatever you're using. So let's cut those pieces. I just want to measure them to make sure that I've got them the right length. A little bit smaller there we go so cut them exactly the same otherwise your your thread catcher will be a little bit wonky and we want to attach that to our outer piece and like I said you will get the exact measurements of where to put them but it looks something like that so just top stitch those in place and then you don't have to think about them again so let's pop those just there. So obviously you're stitching these um, about an eighth of an inch away from the raw edge. Again, let's just make sure they're lined up. You'll, you'll get the exact measurements of where to put them. I'm just continuing along the top there. And that's those attached. And you get a lovely picture to show you what that looks like, but you've got this video to help you so the next part is that we're going to stitch the size up just like we did before so on the outer we're stitching down both of those outer short edges and we're boxing the corners um, and then with the lining we're stitching this one side and then we're putting a turning gap in another in the other side so whichever side you prefer it doesn't matter but I would only stitch 
well an, an inch of fat from so if I hold it like this you're only stitching about here and here so you need a turning gap of at least two inches to get all that bulk through um, and then box the bottom so we'll do that now while I remember to put the turning gap in that's my turning gap done probably best to do that straight away in case you forget <laughs> it's so easy to forget right up the other side so I've done that side turning gap this side this is the lining pinch those corners together and we're going straight across the bottom so this is really a, a good repeat of what we've just done you can open up those seams if you want to I don't mind whether you push them to one side or open them up um, it's whatever's easiest for you I mean sometimes it's uh, it's good to distribute the, the thickness and there's certainly times when you need to do that but with a little box like this maybe maybe don't worry <laughs> so there's our lining so we're going to repeat that with our outer except we don't want a turning gap one side second side now box um, I always use um, an 80-20 wadding uh, and I use a, a temporary adhesive and this hasn't been cut a quarter of an inch smaller so I know I haven't got any worries about the wadding coming away I mean I never worry about that anyway um, but you might want to trim the wadding back you might want to use something like uh, what is it an H640 Vaseline which which glues onto your piece but um you know we, we've all got our favorites whatever you like so there's my two little boxes so now we're going to put right sides together because <laughs> I did the opposite on the first one match up your side seams you're going all the way around the top cut those threads if you need to if you can invest at some point in a machine that cuts your threads oh my gosh <laughs> I know it's sometimes considered a luxury but oh, let's cut my threads I didn't need to um, but gosh it's a great thing to have as a little extra on your machine so right sides together we're stitching around the top part of the box this is the thread catcher make sure those seams match up so you've got two seams to consider either end or either the sides just be careful you've got your ribbon or your rickrack whatever you're using lace just be careful you're not stitching that down in the wrong place all the way around there we go so there's our thread catcher made so just turn this through so there's my little opening and it is tiny so you might struggle a little bit to get this through I'll reach for the furthest corner and take that out first the rest should come really easily after that again make sure you give everything a good press so keep working at it if your threads start to snap or break then just go carefully obviously but you don't want the threads to um, snap right up to the end of the seams that would be difficult to stitch then but just take your time so there's our box made so we better stitch the turning gap closed so just pull those edges together so get hold of one side get hold of the other side give it a tug and that should sit together really nicely pop it under the machine I 
and top stitch. And because we did about an inch of stitching top and bottom, you should have a nice little part where you can actually get in there and stitch these pieces together. Now you might want to top stitch this. Uh, on mine I added lace. Hmm. Rick rack. So we could do that just to pretty it up. But make sure that all of this edge, give it a little ruckle with your fingers. Just roll those seams or press it. And there's our box, but we need to put some rack on. It's, if you're going to top stitch something like that, you might as well use get do something pretty with it. So again, just going to top, turn my box through so I'm stitching on the inside. It's just, just sometimes easier. I'll start at the side. And just secure that down and then obviously you know pin this use your quilting clips on this to hold it in place I'm not suggesting for a minute that you're you you just sort of stitch and hope for the best you know do pin measure if you need to I'm just whipping through this so you can see how to construct Sarah Oh, hi there. Thank you for stopping by. I was going to talk to you about the Gold Club, actually, and I'm preparing for our Facebook Live tonight because every week on Facebook in the Gold Sewing Group, we actually do other things like mm, free motion embroidery tonight. So the Gold Online Sewing Group, what is all that about? Well, if you go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, you'll see the sign up tab. Click on that. You get a choice of membership. But what you do get every month is two different super patterns especially for you and, and do you know what when they go in the shop the next month they're 4 99 each so this is an absolute bargain for five pounds about six dollars twenty something like that you're getting those two full patterns with video tutorials as well so why don't you join up today and join the online sewing group which is known as the gold sewing group i'll see you there bye when you come to your ties, just to make sure they're coming out, you don't want to stitch them down. So you're putting your rick rack over the top, and I'll show you when I'm done. So just make sure you've pulled them out. What you could do is use your heat erasable pen and draw a line all the way around and that way you know you've got them exactly you know the whole piece in the right place so just snip that we'll just move that out of the way Oops. and of course you can repeat this you know all throughout the whole process to, to make then it will all match will look beautiful won't it i wanted it to look pretty and i think we've succeeded so again <laughs> Needs a good press. <laughs> so cute. There we are. And there's your little ties to stitch into your the, the main body. So there's our two boxes done. That wasn't too bad, was it? So now let's get all the rest of the bits and pieces in. Got lots of bits and bobs going on here. So You'll have three pockets. All of the measurements are in the pattern. You'll have um, a small pocket, so another word in depth. Okay. You'll have a medium size one like that. And if you've got directional fabric, try and get your, in my case, birds, the right way. And then you've got a large pocket, like so. And all of these pieces are double fabric. Now. I'm going to leave that to you to decide if that is quite extravagant to do that. Um, it also means if you don't want to put a bias trim on the top of each pocket, which I have, you don't need to because it's just a folded edge. So that's kind of like an extra. Um, so the bias goes on the folded edge and obviously the raw edges go to the bottom of your outer body piece. So we'll leave the big one till last. 
the medium one for the middle <laughs> we'll do the little one first like I say just make sure you've got your if it's directional that you've got it the right way around because obviously that way around the birds are upside down so now I've said that I've just turned it right okay so and this is my this is my outer piece ready so let's just pop that to one side um, so I've got three pieces of bias it's not not that decorative but it is um, like a stripy trim which is really nice a bit sugar sugar caney is that right sort of candy cane and I'm actually I folded it in half this is shop bought you can make your own obviously shop bought so I've just folded it in half so I've got two folded edges here and I've got obviously the one folded edge here. So I'm just going to encase my pocket into the bias. So it just literally slides over the top. So it's, it's shown back and front. OK, and we're just going to stitch that in one go. I've made mine a lot longer. You just trim it. Um, and of course, what you could do is attach some lace to that as well. If you put lace on this and you're going to go around the outer, then please use a tiny little zigzag and that way it'll still stretch. On, on these straight edges, it really doesn't matter if it's bias or not. So let me just check I want to make sure I'm going to stitch on the top because that's what I'm going to see. And I'm stitching. I'm, I'm not using my long length of stitch, which I could, which is usually a three. So I'm sticking at 2.5. I'm making sure that my folded edge goes right up to the center when you know where my fold is on my bias. So it goes tucks right inside. Keep making sure that that is tucked right up. So the fold of your pocket goes into the fold of the bias. And I would give yourself or cut yourself a bit of slack really I was going to say because I would stitch this at a between an sixteenth and an, and an eighth of an inch that way you know you're going to catch both sides if you don't it's not the end of the world you could tack it down with a little hand stitch if you stitch this on the front it won't matter about the back because you're not going to see it but you could hand tack it down if you miss that piece or you could just use a little bit of fabric glue. So there's the bias on the little pocket. Let's find the scissors that I buried. Just trim that off. There, looks nice, doesn't it? Really fresh. Love the blue on there. So now we'll do the medium. We're just going to repeat this now three times. So this is the medium. Don't forget, get your birds the right way around. And you're stitching on the front. So you know it's nice and neat. So again, just make sure the fold of your pocket goes in right to up to the fold of your bias. Just tuck that right in. And again, you could edge this with the rickrack or some pretty lace. The idea of this was to make it pretty. You might not want to. You might want to make it out of Halloween fabric or Christmas fabric or I don't know. A um, piece of Tim Holtz fabric because he's very, very different, isn't he? His fabrics. That would be awesome. <laughs> so uh, I'm just doing this to suit me. <laughs> there we are. So that's the second pocket and, the, and the, the other side is stitched beautifully as well. Follow that technique, you won't go wrong. Trim and okay, keep it tidy. And so we've now done, I'll just make sure my birds are the right way around. So now I can actually pop these on top of each other. So those are our front pockets. I'm not going to bother stitching that because I'm going to pin this onto the outer body in just a sec, but I'll keep them just there. And then while we're, while we're at it, we might as well put the binding on the larger pocket. And this is the one that goes down the outside of your sofa or your chair, whichever this is going to go on to. And like I said before, it's quite important this, is deciding where your thread catcher and your box your top box is going to sit 
because then it will give you a left hand side or a right hand side and you'll understand that when you come to make it especially if you change it around but also I want you to just pop the main outer body over your sofa or chair arm to make sure it's going to sit exactly where you want to sit because no sofa or chair is the same so there's a lot of this is down to you so there is the binding on my um, back pocket now all of these pockets are going to be stitched down the center so the easiest way to do this and I'll just bring my iron in and obviously you can do this or you can draw lines we'll do shall we do both that'll be the easiest thing so find your so this is the front of your back pocket so fold it so it's the inside together that way you get a nice clean line of ironing if you like on the outside make sure all of your edges are together you might want to pin I think that would be a good idea pin your two layers together and that way they stay together when you fold I think that's true yeah and then just fold them in half and give that a press get yourself a nice crease and that's going to be your guideline of where you're going to stitch down the center of your pocket gosh that's hot <laughs> so if i open this up and you see we've got a lovely crease line so i'll just follow that when i when i stitch let me just take those pins out for a moment so with the other one just just as it's different if we look on the overhead so there's my two layers together and I'll just get my heat erasable pen I'm going to mark in halfway you'll know halfway because you'll have had the pattern pieces you'll know the width that you've cut so I'm happy with that and just draw your line all the way so you know now that when they're sitting on top of each other you can see my line going down there that's where we stitch it's just nice and easy so if we stay on the overhead now just for a moment what we're going to do is pop our fabric now my fabric was directional and I out of a half a metre piece I couldn't get the, the, the width was um, or rather the length wasn't long enough so I've gone across my fabric so my birds are going sideways but I figured it wouldn't matter so much so, so if I do it like that actually my my birds don't look too bad because they're flying they could be flying down they could be flying up and most of this is going to have pockets on it anyway so on one of the ends now this doesn't matter which end you put these on to because this could go on the left arm at the moment and this could go on the right arm at the moment so layer your pockets on top so you've got all of your raw edges are now sitting on top of each other so let's just get our pins in you might find clips are better because there's an awful lot of fabric here now because don't forget we have already put our backing on We've already put our wadding in here and we've got the top layer as well okay so you've already got your three layers and if you wanted to you could put some quilting in this just to hold all this together okay so I've got all my layers together and I'll make it for the right hand arm now so this is the same as I did before so if I bring in the one that I made let me just take my box off let me show you flat so this is the one that I made so you can see it's identical to this it looks the same and but I want you to have a look for the position of my loop my piece of hook and loop 
there's my box as well so if I bring if I kind of bring that over so this is on the right hand side so as I'm sitting if I put my right hand right hand out I'll touch the uh, storage caddy the, the uh, Sarah if I wanted this on the left hand side of my sofa or my chair then my loop part would go here and my little thread catcher would go here. So I want you to really, really think about that before you um, go ahead and just stitch them down. So if I was to measure this, if I bring those together, I'm gonna line up my, my pockets. And if I look at, if I go from the top of my pocket, and I, I know you might not be able to see very much now, um, it's, well, let's say six inches. So if I bring my ruler over here, it was six inches to the bottom of the bias. So it's there. And the start of that is going to be two and a half inches. So let's just measure that. So two and a half inches is there. So I'll, just, I'll repeat that. I'll repeat that so you're absolutely sure. So what I've done is I've measured up from the bottom of my bias binding here and that was measured at six and a half inches. I'm happy with that. Or six inches from the top of the bias up to here. And the loop part of my hook and loop is going to go here. So if I get that ready, so it's going to go there. So it's not central. Okay, so as I said to you before, the box will sit on top there, but then you'll have a little space here for your elbow, <laughs> which is really important. You don't want to have something in your way in your stitching. Again, we could just pin that in. So we know that's where we're going to stitch it in a moment. And then when we come down to the other end, Okay, then our bigger pocket goes like that. There's our crease that we did. And again, we're just going to pin that in place. Just make sure your sides meet up beautifully. Probably couldn't do with moving that over just slightly, but I'll leave it like that for the moment. Okay, so what we're going to do now with the pockets, I'll show you on the, the other end. We're just going to stitch that in place, so it's, it's kind of basting. We're just going to stitch those down so they're nice and secure. We're going to stitch our loop part. Notice I have to think about that every single time. We're going to stitch our loop part in place and then we're going to baste our big pocket down. So you can lengthen the stitch if you like now to four, five, because we're just basting. But do make sure that all of your raw edges are sitting nicely on top of each other as best you can. Sometimes these things all depend on your, your cutting because everything obviously is hand cut. They're not machines, not yet. <laughs> They'll come a day. And we're stitching about an eighth of an inch. Just going to take my pins out. I want, you to, to make, I want to make sure all my layers are sitting nicely on top of each other. So I'm just bringing all those down and then straight across. And because we're using lots of layers, you might want to use a walking foot. I'm just literally holding on to these to make sure they don't move. They will a little bit because I haven't got my walking foot on. But trim them. Don't, don't, please don't worry. Please don't worry. Okay. So there's our bottom pockets done. Let's go up the middle. So what we do with that middle divider is we start from the raw edge. Always start from the raw edge. Little back stitch. Right up the centre. Okay. 
go one stitch beyond your bias tape. Lift up your presser foot, swivel your whole piece around, come down. So you'll have two lines. Try and get them on top of each other, but don't worry if you've got like a tram line, don't worry, don't worry, please don't worry. Okay, so what that does is it gives us a lot, nice bit of reinforcement there. We've got the two pockets now. Cute, aren't they? Really cute. So now we go work along and we're going to put our, ouch, <laughs> just caught myself on the pin. I hate pins. Um, we're going to stitch our um, loop in place. So let me get that lined up on the two and a half inch mark. Going to fold that back so the pins aren't anywhere near me. I have history with pins. That's why I don't like them. And, and never stitch over pins. I don't care if the manufacturer says you can or your favourite quarter says you can. Um, <laughs> don't shoot me down in flames, but don't ever do it. I stitched over one years and years and years ago. It broke in half and it went straight into my eye. I was young then and I didn't wear glasses. And by golly, it was one of those things that I always dreamed it would happen and, and then it did. So there's my loop stitched. So now we're just going to baste our big pocket. Let's make sure it's all sitting nicely. As nice as, as it will ever be. Again, just, I would suggest putting your walking foot on, please. So just zoom along. Make sure your corners meet up. We're going to chop these in a second. And there isn't a pattern piece for it. So try and, try and get those layers to sit nicely. But please don't be afraid to trim back, neaten up. Um, I won't tell on you. beyond so I stitch about a half an inch beyond the pockets there my pattern piece out of the way so do you remember we did the crease so we're going to start from the raw edge I'm going to follow the crease line that my iron made just pull your pocket out get it all taut pin it obviously if you need to up to the top one stitch over the edge of your bias so remember that crease we did with the iron up the center of that pocket so that's what we're going to stitch now so start from the raw edge get it started and then get this all lined up nicely and of course if you want to pin either side to hold your fabrics in place then please do that So just go one stitch over the edge of that bias, foot up, swivel your piece all the way around. Hold on, we've got lots of threads going on. Hold on, let's get those cut. That's it. Put down and then you're coming back. So if you can come back exactly on your line, fine. If not, do two lines. Nobody's going to notice. So by doing it this way, all of your threads, your loose threads are on the raw edge, which are going to be put into a seam. And you've got a lovely, lovely, neat top to your pocket and lots of strength. So let me pop my hand in there. 
as you can see great for knitting needles like I said um, and great for a pattern piece because it's nice and big so what we're going to do now is that we're going to round the corners off now I don't want you to go crazy with this um, I also want you to trim some of these edges so it's nice and neat um, so you can pop this on your uh, cutting mat and use your rotary cutter and rulers if you want um, I'll just do this a little quickly by hand it's not too bad when I look at it just make sure that it's sitting because all of this is going to go into your seams so you might want to trim some of it away okay I think we're fine so I want you to have a look on the overhead now there's no exact science to this okay all I want you to do is round this off so if I was to draw it let me turn it so it's better for me if I was to draw it I'd do that okay um, and whatever you cut off there you could use that as your guide for the other corner so obviously I haven't gone right to the raw edge but what I can do is just trim this like that so don't be afraid you don't need a huge amount off look the tiniest bit but what you could do is take that over there and use that as your guide okay but if you feel brave just go for it I'm happy with that just trim it a little bit not that it matters so that'll take the bias binding beautifully and obviously we want to do the other end as well so I'm just going to go for it happy with that you can see just slightly rounded so it's not massive don't you know well it's up to you but you just need and that way the bias will go round your corners um, it would be quite tricky otherwise so I don't think that's too bad so we'll leave it just like that so hopefully you've got um, enough bias binding now to go around the whole piece and of course you can use decorative binding if you wanted to with some lace so if you look at the one I made let's try and bring that in you can see this has got a lovely lovely lace effect to it so pretty isn't it but you can if you wanted to um, make your bias like this or buy your bias this is bought, bought bias <laughs> Um, and then if you wanted to put a little lacy trim on there then please do that but put it on with a little zigzag but just and just catch it on the edge there that would look absolutely fab so before we do that we want to attach our oops I've just unraveled all my bias so that's fine and um, we just want to attach our thread catcher okay now in the pattern it'll show you and I'll bring, bring that in just for a moment it'll show you exactly how that wants to look because it's almost opposite to what you think so have a look at picture 15 and we want to copy that and it's going to go if I can get this sitting straight it wants to go like that so you see where your loop is I'm still having to think hard about that <laughs> place your box over the top and get your um, ribbon or your uh, rick rack right in the center and then I would pop a couple of pins in so I'll do that but then I'll turn this around so I can look at it just to see if I'm happy with how that's sitting I think it's okay so you, you want your box base to you, sorry you want your box to be up, almost upside down so when it is the right way round, it sits like that over the arm of your your chair or your sofa so I'm just going to turn that so I can see it nicely right so I'm just looking at that to make sure that it's sitting it's nice and square which it is so you can stitch that in now give it a little 
top stitch there just to hold it in place and get rid of those pins. Pins are grotty things. <laughs> and I didn't stitch over my pin because my pin head was, <coughs> excuse me, a little far away from the edge. So although it might have looked like it, you know I would never stitch over pins. So there's my my box attached. So now all we're going to do is put the bias on. So start off with a raw edge. Start off maybe the back of your work, the part that's going to go sort of here. Um, you're going to join them together. You're going to fold the end over at, right at the end to go over the top. So that's the only part that you might find to be a little ugly. So in case <clears throat> your pieces and again we're doing exactly the same so the raw edges are going right into the fold of that bias so we're not I'm not thinking about <coughs> excuse me a quarter inch seam allowance I'm not thinking any of that I'm thinking the raw edge is going to go right into the center so just line everything up get comfortable with it get those first couple of stitches in your bias ready and then all you're doing is going to stitch all the way around your whole piece and like I said to you right at the beginning you could quilt this body part this outer main body part now again I would stitch a little bit not a sixteenth of an inch but like I say in between an eighth of an inch and a sixteenth of an inch and then as you go around that curve, you're slightly stretching your bias, just slightly. You're just kind of pulling it to go around that curve. And just sort of help it along a little bit. You might find just using regular bias is, is good for you. Um, sorry regular binding good for you and do uh, keep your piece um, sort of a, as a rectangle and do a mitered corner maybe that's more comfortable for you to do but I thought it'd be nice to use um, bias tape right here we go sorry not concentrating so just feed that all in once um, you've gone all the way around again give it a good press because then the bias tape will do exactly what you want it to do and it'll sit really nicely with the press and because we're using bias it shouldn't sort of if you don't use bias it'll curve your piece up maybe but after a press it should be fine see how you go with it if you haven't done it before then this is a good time to do it so I'll finish going all the way around I'll come back to you when I come nearly to the end and I'll show you how to finish that off so I'm just coming now to the end of doing my bias binding so I've gone all the way around you can see what that looks like if I bring the, the bottom up looks really neat doesn't it really lovely um, so I'm just coming to the end there so this is where I started just here and there's my bias tape coming up to there and I've cut it about an inch longer so I ideally want to cut that probably about three quarters of an inch longer than what you need and what I want you to do so there we are so it's about three quarters of an inch longer so open up your bias fold under about a half an inch iron it if you want to and make yourself a lovely neat folded edge so my my ends there are lovely and folded and it's it's all tucked inside and then you're just overlapping your piece and that makes a really nice neat finish so you don't have to do you know a, a sort of a mitre join like you would with binding absolutely no need on projects like this you can if you want though <laughs> you do whatever you're you're comfortable with or what you like doing but with things like this I wouldn't bother so all I'm doing is tucking over the top of my 
binding here so that top binding there is going inside and my folded edge is going right over the top and that gives us a lovely neat finish so try and get that to sit on top of each other little stitch there back stitch to hold and yep that's joined all the layers together beautifully lovely so all we need now is for this to have a nice press and that is our Sarah completed so again you, you can see that it's a really nice um, easy project for you um, and very very useful and of course our box sits on the top like that and actually it's really secure especially when it's on your sofa and then your thread catcher is there or you can put your sweets in there assuming you haven't got a dog so there we are I think that looks lovely loving 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 the fabric the fabric i'm using um in this for this month for this month's patterns are higgs and higgs believe it or not so there we are so there are our two sarah's made really really useful projects i think you'll find so i pop that one on there you can see what that looks like and obviously the back you got the back is the two lovely deep pockets you can see i've used a, a different binding here and i've used the rickrack as well so there's lots of potential for creativity on these projects so there we are there is um sarah to match our sarah i've got the two there hold on let's go that way so there's my two there so this one now matches that doesn't it look fab Okay, so I'm going to go away and press these now. I hope you enjoy making, Sarah, and I hope you make loads.